Welcome back. It's me, Lou. All right. So today is going to be another action figure unboxing and review. And I received this in the mail recently from Amazon. All right. So let's take this out. As you can see, it comes in this protective mailer box. And we have uh, the G.I. Joe Classified Series Kamakura. Alright, so um, I don't know if this is an Amazon exclusive. Um, I paid, I think, 33 bucks for it. Which I think is kind of a lot. Um, you know, we've been seeing a price increase across the board on all action figure lines. Uh, Hasbro stuff especially. Uh, as you can see, this comes in the eco-friendly packaging. It's a windowless design. Uh, has a very comic book illustration, um, <laughs> like portrayal of the character uh, with him without the mask as he's taking out all these Cobra troops. Uh, there's a f the figure again without the mask. Uh, decent illustration. He has the the Arashi Kage clan logo on his right forearm and here's what you're getting um, he comes with the extra portrait the masked head the hood uh, the backpack to store his blades um, and he comes with some firearms and additional weaponry and then here's his perks and abilities which you could decipher on the GI Joe website again here they are on the side uh, just out of curiosity give me a second um, I'm just curious to see if these are the same sizes all right so the newer style uh, windowless box is actually it's a different design I thought it would be the same uh, size but it's not Okay, so um, uh, I was really excited when they announced this character. Um, and I remember seeing some comments on social media and then also reading some of the reviews. Uh, some people felt that, you know, the price of this figure was a little bit uh, too much. And I'm not going to argue with that. You know, for me to pay $33 for a figure that, you know, we generally paid like back in the day $20 for, it is kind of a lot. Um, I also read that some people felt that this was a waste because... Um, they kind of felt that it, it was a waste of a spot because they kind of felt that they should have released a, a more well-known character. Um, I don't know. I, th I have an issue with that statement just because I'm a fan of this character. I think just because you're, if you're unfamiliar with it, I don't think it's necessarily a waste. Um, this was a character that they introduced during the IDW comic book era of G.I. Joe. Which I happen to have right here. <laughs> so we're going to give you a short little history lesson on this character. Uh, so Kamakura is the apprentice of Snake Eyes. He was introduced way back in, what year was this? Um, if I had to guess, I think this was like maybe like 1998, 99, or early, two, or early 2000s. Alright, so this was 2001. So the character of Kamakura was introduced in the IDW G.I. Joe universe um, in 2021. Uh, during this time period, some of the 80s properties were seeing a resurgence in the world of comic books. Uh, that was kind of think I think because most because of Dreamwave and their take on the Transformers. Uh, after the success with Transformers, uh, the publishing studio Devil's Due, uh, you know, they took the reins of GI Joe and then they published a comic through Image. And I remember this being a fun, a fun ride. Uh, the comic actually entered right when you open the first page. So right when you open up the first page of the first issue, the story actually begins with Kamakura. So here he is right here. So I think in some regards, I think he's a pretty significant toy release. You know, just because maybe he grew up on the 80s and he didn't know who this guy was, I don't think this was a waste of a character. Um, here's a character again in front of Silent Master. And... Uh, Let's get this into focus. 
Yeah, so as you can see, you know, this this guy kind of played a significant role in the second life of uh, G.I. Joe, a real American hero. And the design of the figure takes cues from his first appearance. And this wasn't the first Kamakura action figure also. Uh, if you're a collector of the older style of G.I. Joes, um, you might remember this guy over here. Um, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this was the first Kamakura action figure. Um, I think it was released under the Valor vs. Venom line. I think. I, I might be wrong on that. Uh, if I am, just correct me down below. But again, this is kind of based off of his original appearance in the comic book. You can kind of see the similarities in the costume. Uh, but this isn't my favorite Kamakura figure. Let me grab my favorite one. So this right here happens to be my favorite version of Kamakura. Uh, this was from the G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra line. So the Rise of Cobra was based off of the first live action movie. Um, they made a figure of Kamakura even though this character does not appear in the movie at all. Uh, but I think it's a wonderful design. Uh, beautiful illustration. I love the card back. Uh, Rise of Cobra and Pursuit of Cobra are my two favorite G.I. Joe lines, period. Um, I grew up on the 80s stuff, but... I just loved, um, even though the movie, you know, was kind of hokey, I enjoyed it, but man, I loved the action figures. I think they really stepped up uh, the three and three quarter, four inch scale G.I. Joe figures during this time period. You know, I, the graphic design, the package design, uh, the presentation, the, the figures, the amount of accessories you got, the the much more improved articulation without the, the O-ring. I thought these these figures were just amazing. Really beautiful figures. Or I take it back. I couldn't remember if these used the O-ring or not. But either way, they're awesome. So as you can see, Kamakura is not necessarily a new character. He's been around. You know, just because he wasn't around in the 80s doesn't mean he's insignificant. So not that he needs any defending, but I just kind of felt that, you know, just because you felt, just because you didn't know the character, you know, I don't think it's necessarily a waste of a spot. Because there's some of us out there who actually, you know, read the comic books and really dig this you know to dig this this fella all right so let's get started um all right the one thing i do like about this with some of the gi joe releases in the windowless packaging is that you can take the figures out and the presentation's still nice like i've been reviewing some of the windowless marvel stuff and then they come in those weird like they're like wrapped in tissue paper they're almost like zombies um the classified series though they've done such a fun job of that even though it's a windowless design you know unboxing the figures is pretty cool because you kind of get like this storage footlocker kind of deal for the accessories and even the presentation of the figure here looks pretty awesome and let's just do away with these um uh paper tie downs Right, how do I open this? All right, so we have a pair of staffs here. Um, I'm going to leave these on the card. Over here we have, I think these are his firearms, I think. Let me open this up real quick. All right, so there's his blades and then his um, machine gun. I think it's an Uzi. Um,
So this tissue wrapping is actually sealed, so we actually have to cut this one open. Um, I'm not getting crazy with this because, I don't know, just in case I decide to sell this in the future, but I doubt that'll ever happen. Um, Give me a moment. I, I think, am I missing a piece? I think I might be missing a piece. Let me open this up real quick. I think I'm, I might be missing the backpack uh, for his, to store the um, swords. Wow, that's surprising. Am I missing that? Oh no, never mind, it's over here. All right, so let's take a look at all the accessories. Um, all right, so like I mentioned, he has his uh, swords, machine gun. Uh, he has his pistol over here, uh, extra head, um, or the maskless head. Uh, he comes with his backpack to store the blades. Um, he comes with a knife. Uh, with a serrated end on the opposite side. And then he comes with his headband. I think this is his headband. How does this work? Alright. Um... Oh, okay. So this is for his... I right, take it back. So this plugs into the back here. It's part of his belt. So you give him that. Alright, so the first off, let's review the figure before we review the accessories. Kind of set everything aside. Alright, beautiful head sculpt. Um, I'm not sure how much of this, if, if this is all new or if any of this is reused. Which could warrant, you know, the higher price point. Uh, the sculpting is well done. Uh, there's a subtle micro texture on his uniform. Um, he has the shorter sleeves. Uh, asymmetry on his forearms. He has the Rashikage clan logo on his right forearm. Armor plated left forearm. Um, armor plated knuckles. Uh, he has a utility belt. And this utility belt's on a separate piece. It's, it's an overlapping piece over the lower torso. Um, he has metal plated uh, knee pads and shin guards. Uh, nice samurai armor detailing on the um, boots. And then he has the split ninja toes. Um, as you can see right there. Um, in terms of the head options, you can either take off the head. And then if you wanted to, I think you could give him the the hood over the mask so you could create kind of like you know this style of look if you wanted to or if you want you could uh take this piece here so it's almost like the mask is off and then give them the maskless look uh like that All right, so for now, I'm just going to go full on uh, just with the old school mask without the hood, just so we can like, check out the articulation. All right, so uh, Kamakura's head, it rotates. Does he look down? Uh, not so much. Does he look up? Uh, this looks forward. Arms rotate. They go out. Uh, the butterfly joint on this figure is surprisingly really smooth. It's almost like too loose. You know, I'd, I'd kind of like a little bit of resistance on it, but it's nice that it's not like stuck. Like with some like Marvel Legends figures I've reviewed. And the range of motion is pretty decent also. As you can see, you can like arch his arms back a fair deal. Um, he has a bicep cut right there. Double pinned elbows, pinless design, which is nice. Articulated wrists. Uh, here's his ab crunch. This range of motion. Let's see how far he goes back. 
pretty decent. Uh, swivel at the waist, kicks up, kicks outward, uh, upper thigh cut, uh, double pinned knees, pinless design, articulated ankles, and no toe articulation. So it's a pretty solid figure. Um, like I said, you know, I'm a big fan of the character. So for me to get this guy, it's really cool. Um, is he worth the purchase, though? I think that depends. Um, you know, at this price point, I think if you're not familiar with this character, if you kind of care less, I'd say pass on him and just wait till he's on sale. Um, if you don't know who the character is, I think, any, but you want to army build, um, even though he's actually a, a hero character and just not a standard, and just not a standard grunt. Um, I think it'd be kind of cool to hear uh, to army build this guy if you didn't know who he was. You know, you could just say maybe he's like a foot soldier of the Arashikage clan. But if you know who this dude is, you know, full on get him. I think it's fun. I think it's kind of fun that they're giving us, you know, um, characters beyond, you know, than just the, what people are familiar with from the 80s. Uh, accessory wise, he comes with. You know, fair amount of accessories. Um, I don't think there's storage for the pistol or the knife, unfortunately. You know, it'd be nice if they gave us a sheath or a holster. You could store the knife technically in one of these shorter. Um, no, it won't fit. It doesn't fit in here. Uh, but overall, it's a decent figure. Now, as much as I love the figure, and even though I do have a bias towards them, I think if I had to rate them on a scale of 1 to 10... Uh, uh, probably just a solid eight to eight and a half. The price points for me is what really hurts it. Oh, okay, I'm kind of losing my voice. I could kind of feel it coming on. So let's wrap this one up. <clears throat> All right, once again, my name is Lou. Uh, thanks for checking this out. And <laughs> I'm really losing my voice. So I'll talk to you later. All right, later.